Greetings, friends, and welcome back on this Sabbath day. If you're visiting with us for the, for, for the first time, my name is Reverend Ruth Gallat. I'm the pastor of the Long Meadow Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Auburn, New Hampshire, and I come here to YouTube twice a week. I'm here every Sunday with a service of worship that includes prayer, scripture, and reflection for the entire church family, and I'm also here every Wednesday with a special message for the children of our church. Our congregation is currently gathering in a few different ways. We began uh, meeting again inside our church building last Sunday on July 4th, and we are continuing to move forward, reintroducing different aspects over time in this time of transition and emergence. This particular Sunday, we will be um, reintroducing music to our services, as we have found ways of doing that safely. And so it is with great joy that we do that. I, but I also know that not everybody is able to or ready to gather in person in an indoor environment. And so I also come to you uh, every Sunday at 11 o'clock on Zoom, as well as providing a pre-recorded message here on YouTube that's available every Sunday morning. And so I thank you for joining with me here today. Uh, just a reminder that in July and August, our church will be holding a school supply drive to assemble school kits for our local uh, elementary school, Auburn Village School, to provide uh, tools and equipment for uh, children who are um, not able to um, you know, buy all of those things themselves. And if you'd like more information about that, you can watch my children's message from a couple of weeks ago. I'll put a link in down below for that so you can learn a little bit more about what that's about. Um, but we also provide um, school supplies th for children around the world through our partners at Church World Service. And again, you can hear more about that uh, if you watch the video. Uh, where I've linked down below. If you're feeling blessed by this time of worship together and you would like to support the ongoing ministries of the Long Meadow Congregational Church UCC in Auburn, we welcome any donations of support that you would like to make and I've provided an address in the description down below. But whether you're able to or not, we are blessed to have you joining us and we ask God's blessing upon you and upon this time we have together that together we may worship God with joy and celebration. And so to begin, my friends, I invite you to join with me as we offer to God our hearts in prayer. Will you join with me? Creator God, in praise and adoration, our spirits dance before you today. You have created this wonderful universe and all the magnificent things within it. You have blessed us with so much throughout our lives, even to this day of praise and thanksgiving. And so we let our spirits soar today in joy, and we let our hearts sing boldly of your wondrous love. We celebrate your love and your presence with us, and it is in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, that we offer you our thanks. On this day, we thank you for the opportunity to serve your children by coming together and working with different organizations throughout our town to provide school kits for children here in Auburn as well as for those around the world. We thank you for any opportunity we have to work with others, for in doing so, it builds up our community and also your realm here on earth. We thank you for all who are working around, across our country and around the world, those who act locally as well as think globally. As each of us does our part to plant seeds that will grow and bear much fruit. Lord of the dance of life, you have breathed into us your creative and joyful spirit. You have lifted us from the dust into the swirling joy of your presence. We are so grateful for all that you have done for us. Each day reminds us that in many ways, excuse me, reminds us in many ways of your mercy and your love. 
Yet there are times in our lives when we have felt lost and alone, and we have been hurt and frightened and wondered where you were. Remind us again of your loving presence, we pray. Help us to become agents of healing in this world, reaching out to repair and to rebuild. We continue to pray for all those who are ill or who are awaiting test results. And we pray for all who have passed from life in this month. And we especially hold up to you, your children in Florida who were killed and are still missing in the building collapse in Florida. We pray for their families who long for closure, whose grief cannot begin. We pray for all those who work so hard to deal with this tragedy. And we pray that we may come together in support and loving care. We pray for all those who are continuing to work on the front lines of this pandemic, those who work in the medical field every day, putting their own, their own health at risk. And we thank you and pray for their families who have given up so much during this time. We pray that these individuals may receive both the strength they need as well as the rest that they need in order to continue working and to renew and refresh their spirits. Help us to remember that wherever we gather, whether in person, on Zoom, or here on YouTube, we are joined together in your spirit and we are in your house for you are there with us. Place your hands of healing on our lives, we pray, O oh God, and comfort us when we become afraid, lost, lonely, or fearful. Prepare us to serve you faithfully all of our days. As we have lifted the names of dear ones to you who are in need of your healing love, cause us to reflect on our needs for your love and our response in dedicated service to you. Be with us now in this time and place and in all the places and times of our lives as we raise our hearts to you now in silence. God, your love for us is real and alive in our hearts today. And we can feel the light of the Lord of love and life is with us. Shine and dance with us this day, we pray that we may experience and bring your peace to all we meet this day and all our days as we join together in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today, my friends, I have made the decision to step away, at least for this week, from the Gospel of Mark and read instead the story of King David, which we hear in 2 Samuel. The reason I chose this particular one is because, as I mentioned earlier, it is our plan today to be uh, reintroduce music to our worship, time of worship, because we've been meeting online and some of the difficulties of providing music, which is copyrighted, and we wish to honor that. Um, and so I cannot play music here on YouTube um, and or on Zoom, but we are now back in our worship space and we are going to begin to do that as we are, have learned how to do that safely. And so I, I wanted to, to celebrate that. And as I looked over the lectionary texts that were provided for this day in the church year, I came upon the story of David dancing before the Lord as he enters into 
his kingdom after the death of Saul. And so I'm reading to you from 2 Samuel, chapter 6. I'm reading, it's presented as verses 1 through 5, and then we jump down to verse 12 through 19. So 2 Samuel 6, verses 1 to 5, and then 12 to 19. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God. And Ahio went in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were gathering before the Lord with all their might. Excuse me. Um, David and all of the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. And now we move to... Verse 12, so David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded only with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul and wife of David, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. This, my friends, is the word of God. In our time of worship, this reading this particular scripture reminded me of, I think, one of the uh, first, I don't know about him, first spiritual songs that I learned and sang uh, quite a lot when I was in junior high uh, in youth group in church. And I think it's one that you might remember, and I'll just present to you a, a small portion of it here. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. It's a lovely, joyful song. It's an old, old tune. Uh, came from a Shaker hymn, but I think it has roots long before. I also read that it's a traditional Irish tune, and it certainly sounds very Celtic. Um, but it's just joyful words about God being the Lord of the dance of, of joy and, and well-being. And in this time of emergence, on this day in particular, when we are reintroducing music to our worship gatherings, I longed for a message of joy and hope and exuberance. But the gospel reading in Mark for today was about the killing of John the Baptist. And I will admit that selfishly, I didn't want to go there today. 
no good theological or prophetic reason. I just didn't want to talk about treachery and horror and manipulation today. And so as I looked through the other scripture texts offered for this Sunday in the church year and read today's text from 2 Samuel about David famously dancing for the Lord, and, and I naively thought, great, dancing, music, joy, that's where I want to go. And so I selected that text for today. But as it is about King David, I really should have known better than to assume that this was a purely happy story about dancing and music and joy, because David is a very complex character. So before I get into this, can you think of anything you might know about David, any stories that you might know about David? Think about that for a second. We hear quite a lot about David in the first book of Samuel and proceeding through the second book of Samuel we hear about the most of his lifespan and he comes up again and again throughout scriptures. What are some stories that we know about David? Well we first hear about him uh, with, David, with Goliath, the giant Philistine. And we know that he played beautiful music. And we know the story about David with King Saul, whom he at first served and then found out was more treacherous and didn't like. And it's always set up as bad, evil Saul and good, perfect David. We also know that David wrote psalms, the songs that we have in our Bible. We know the story, or we've heard the story, or at least the phrase about David and Bathsheba, not one of his better moments. Um, we know that David is the father of the great King Solomon, and that David was an ancestor of Jesus, and that Bethlehem is the city of David. <clears throat> we hear a lot about David. In fact, there are close to 1,000 verses in the Bible that concern David. So he's a very prominent figure and so much of what I read about him is framed in such a way as to present him as a great hero. He defeated the enormous enemy Philistine Goliath. He was a good guy who brought down the bad King Saul and without question God loved David. And so we think, if God loved him so much, David must have been a near-perfect person, right? Wrong. As I said, when we hear the stories, they are framed in such a way that we hear the good parts. But pretty much all of the stories that I just listed about David, the hero, had distinct dark sides to them, including today's text. As you may have noticed when I told you the specifics of what I would be reading, that is 2 Samuel 6 verses 1 to 5 and then jumping down to verse 12, you'll notice that it, edited, it was edited to eliminate several verses and for the most part present David as joyfully returning home and dancing before God, with the great Ark of the Covenant being born before him. Well, there's a reason that those six verses were eliminated from today's lesson. Do you remember the first Indiana Jones movie, The Raiders of the Lost Ark, that featured this Ark of the Covenant? This is the, they were referencing the same Ark of the Covenant that we are hearing about in today's text. It was a profoundly holy object, a box created to carry the remnants of the literal tablets bearing the Ten Commandments created by God and given to Moses. This is not something to be messed with and used for your own purposes and glory as the bad guys in the movie learned. But also David learned in the six verses that were edited out of what we heard today. For you see, in summary, as David chose to use the ark to bring glory to himself in his triumphal return home, 
as he's coming along, the ark begins to slip. It's carried on a cart, and it they hit a bump. It slips, and a friend of David's, Uzzah, reaches out to push it back into place. He's just trying to save it from falling into the ground. He pushes it back into place, and he is struck down immediately, and he dies. This does cause David to pause and check things out a bit more, back for three months, before proceeding carefully with the ark, because it will reinforce his position both as king and as favored by God. Pretty much every story about David has moments of glory and goodness, as well as moments that at least, at the very least, cause us to raise an eyebrow or two, like the story of his desire for Bathsheba that led him to being involved in her husband's death. Not Again, not one of his better moments. So no, David was not perfect. He was not pure evil either. He did some pretty rotten things and he repented. Psalm 51 is his great prayer of repentance that we've heard and love. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment, he says. He goes on to pray, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. It is a prayer of deep repentance and turning, acknowledging the evil that he has done, turning from it and asking God's help in doing so. And it is that repentance that saves David and gives him reason to dance. It is the same for all of us. We are not perfect. We've made mistakes. We have at times loved ourselves and our ways more than we have loved God and God's ways. And we are not pure evil either. For we know how to repent. And we know how to look at our choices and acknowledge when we have made mistakes and then to choose another way. This ability to repent, to acknowledge the wrong and choose another direction is a strength. It is a gift given to us by our ever faithful God who gives us a way back. Yes, God loved flawed selfish, self-serving David, and David danced in celebration and joy. God loves us as well, my friends, with all of our flaws and our self-serving ways. God loves us and calls upon us to dance with joy in the presence and the light of God. As we move forward, we will stumble and we will make mistakes. But God will be with us, leading us in the undignified, wild dance of the Holy Spirit that is the life God wishes for us. Thanks be to God. I thank you for joining me here this day, and I hope that you will join with me again. I'm here every Sunday with a special service of worship for the entire church family as well as every Wednesday with a special message for the children of our church and if you wish to be notified of when I upload new content you will find a um, red subscribe button down below you can click on that and the bell next to it and you will receive notification every time new content is uploaded until then my friends Go forth into the world in faithfulness. Join all those who have danced with the Lord throughout the generations. Take the song and the rhythm of God's word into the world and invite others to celebrate the joy with you. 
dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance said he go in peace my friends and return in joy until we meet again thank you